Good afternoon, uh, my name is Elise Hatton, I'm the Smart Hub Business Manager and welcome to today's Hub Live. We are live here in the Smart Hub in my office with our media wall and I have a very, very special guest for today's Hub Live. Um, a colleague of mine, uh, Greg Bowden, who is the Executive Manager for Advanced Rockhampton. Hello. Hey Elise, how are you? I'm very great to, well. Great to be here at the Smart Hub. I, I walked all this way, you know, 20 yeah, metres from my All office. 20 metres, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, but isn't the weather perfect at the moment? It it's is. like it's worth yeah. the, the walks. Beautiful. Well, you know, 306 days of sunshine in Rocky, it's the place to be. It is the place <laughs> to be. So this is not the place you've been um, for, for a long time, like you came from Brisbane originally. Yeah, yeah. Tell us when, tell us a bit about your background and then how did you make your way to Rocky? Sure, well thanks for asking that Elise. I, 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 it's one of my favourite subjects is talking about myself. But, uh, <laughs> my, well my, you have an audience <laughs> to it. My equal favourite obviously being Rockhampton. But I mean, yeah, I mean I, I grew up uh, as a central Queensland boy in Blackwater. Uh, but I left, uh, I left when I was about 20 and uh, decided to make my way to what I call the Big Smoke after growing at Blackwater, Brisbane's the Big Smoke. So, yeah. uh, you know, it was an exciting time. I was able to work in mining, but then w move down and work in mining in, in Brisbane uh, for the head office of three mining uh, operations uh, back then. And then I went and worked for Mount Isa Mine. So very much a background in, in mining and construction of mines in a lot of cases, but in, from that procurement and supply chain field as well. So for me, that's really important. It's a passion that I've kept uh, for a long time since then, that supply chain. It, it really has served me well in what I do now in economic development. So, you know, I spent 15 years then, after mining and construction, I spent 15 years working for Brisbane City Council, wow. uh, which is the largest uh, municipal government in, in Australia. Uh, with a $3.1 billion budget. So that, that in itself was a challenge. I, I worked directly for the Lord Mayor there. So that, that was good and bad, of course. Uh, you know, so I wasn't in touch and, and in, in, the, in the office with uh, the other 8,000 staff. I, I had a small office of my own of about 30 staff and, uh, and really took up the running for the Lord Mayor and the councillors to make sure that what the other 8,000 staff were doing were delivering what the policies were that, that the government were actually making at the time. So that, that was a really challenging role for those two times. I went through two Lord Mayors, and uh, with, with Campbell Newman first, and then, and then Graham Quirk for, for the last eight years of that. And uh, what a lovely fellow he is. I'll just put a plug in for him. He's just a true gentleman, that fellow, Graham Quirk. But you know, then came up here last October, so I can't believe it's been six months since I even met you, Elise, mm. but six months I've been here. And wow, well, it's, it's flown, but we, we've been able to achieve some small things so far, but put some really good foundations in for the future. That, awesome. That's for sure. So, awesome. Yeah. So first, maybe tell us what is Advanced Rockhampton? Yeah. What, does, what does that mean? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very good question. I think I'm still trying to work that out myself as well. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, really, Advanced Rockhampton, I can put it into three little bubbles. The first bubble being Rockhampton Regional Council. We are fully funded and fully managed by Rockhampton Regional Council. So yeah. they, pay my, they pay my bill, but at the same time, they really drive the policy of what it's all about, mm -hmm. okay? So I follow what they set from an economic policy, and obviously I work very closely with them as well. You know, from that point of view, I then, I look at, okay, where do we want to drive economic development for the region? Yeah. And then how do we then work with wider regions? How do we work at other levels of government to make sure that works? So to then put that down into what do we really do? Uh, so there's three arms, uh, maybe four. Uh, we've got tourism. Mm -hmm. Tourism marketing, I'd probably lump into one. You know, it's probably not truly that, but tourism marketing of a region. We then go to, to major city building events. I'll get in a bit more detail in a minute. And then there's the industry development side of things. And that's what a lot of people call economic development, but I call economic development the whole shoot and match. It's, right. it's all of those things. So yeah. you need all of those things to make a great economic development success for your city uh, along the way. So, you know, what, do, what does that actually mean? Well, tourism and marketing, I suppose some would think that that's obvious. Uh, but mm. to me, it's about making a livable city. It's all about livability from that point of view. It's building a city that people want to live in because then you move to the visitability, building a city that people want to visit. And then it's about the investability. These don't have to necessarily go in that order uh, or, or run concurrently. They can run in parallel. But if, if people don't want to live here, then people probably aren't going to visit here and they're definitely not going to invest money here. So I try and put those there. So, you know, from that tourism point of view, some would go, well, you don't have a beach, so, uh, you know, we, we, we're not going to visit there. Mm -hmm. Well, we have lots of other wonderful things in Rockhampton, but the wider region, we have so many awesome things. We certainly have a beach. 
we have an island, you know, we have some great things there. And, and I do look at it at the wider region and what can be done from that tourism sector, you know, just from a Rockhampton point of view. We have that world-class facility up there uh, in, uh, in Mount Archer. And down the other end, the book ended at the other end, we have free meerkats with a wonderful zoo and uh, oh, yeah. another, another baby chimpanzee hopefully coming along this weekend yeah. uh, along Amazing. the way. So from that side of things, you know, that's that tourism marketing. We've got right now probably about 20 billboards all around the state making sure people know that I'm trying to put Rocky on the radar. Uh, that's, that's a real slogan that I'll probably put out there. Is, you'll hear me say it a couple of times today is put Rockhampton on the radar, put it in our own residents' heads, but also put it in the heads of the people around the, the state, then moving outwards around the country, and then maybe globally once we get past this pandemic. Nice, <laughs> absolutely. Way. I'm going to interrupt you there just to <clears> say <throat> a quick hello to Leanne, to Drew, Gideon. Thank you so much for joining us. I think you all know Greg, um, but welcome. <laughs> if you have any questions for Greg, it would be really cool if you put those in the comments and we'll be sure to ask those questions. Okay, <laughs> so yes, we have the free meerkats. Tell us more. Oh, no, well, you know, the, the meerkats are awesome, by the way. They are. <laughs> I get out there as much are. as I possibly can. But I mean, then from that industry development, there's some real focused sectors there. You know, and that, that, that's where I'm probably spending a lot of my time. The council want to design a new economic development strategy. Uh, I know yourself here with the, with the innovation hub, uh, you're looking at that innovation strategy and we've worked together with that. And that, that's really why we will continue to work hand in glove along the way. So mm -hmm. we're really, we've got some key sectors that we're concentrating on as part of that strategy. And that, we're in defence, so we've got this wonderful facility in Shoalwater Bay up there, and we've got to make sure we capitalise on having that here as well. Mm. So that, that's sort of sector number one, and these aren't in, in any particular order, of course. Mm. Um, from a mining and resources point of view, and a construction point of view, we've got such a great uh, you know, city, centrally located, all those wonderful things along the way that we can do in mining and resources. Okay, so I think really, that's, that's one of our key capability sectors that we've already got. We need to continue to grow the pie on that mm, one. Mm. The same with agriculture and mm. the same with water. Mm. I lump those two together because without water, you can't have agriculture mm. in, in most occasions, of course. But, you know, it's just so important to have those two together. There's so many uh, I've, I've learned since I've been back here. So agriculture to me, where the beef capital of Australia will stay that, we'll continue to capitalise on that with Beef Week coming up next month as well. But I mean, there's so many other things we do that so we don't talk about. We don't talk about our successes. I mean, who would have known how many lychees come out of Rockhampton, I not know. just central Queensland? Mm. You know, we, we, we are the spice capital of Queensland as well. Who knows that? You know, mm. avocados, uh, macadamias. I mean, with the raising of the Rookwood Weir, there's an amazing opportunity for 5,000 new hectares of macadamia nuts. Yeah, you know, incredible. most of those will go to the export market, like a lot of our beef does. But I mean, you know, so that's why uh, I never thought I'd be walking the door saying that I'm going to focus on agriculture. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. I, thought, I thought that was just beef here with the beef capital, we'll, we'll <laughs> focus on that. So then some of the new opportunities, renewable energy. So recently, you know, renewable energy has become a real focus with our new mayor uh, focused on renewable energy but also my own passion for it as well. So we will always work and be part of this resources hub. We've got mm. to continue to capitalise on that. But what are the new opportunities? And renewables is one of those. So supplementing, it's just so amazing to be able to say we're a resources hub, but we're also a renewable energy hotspot to supplement mm. those and put those two together. You know, we have four wind farms very close to being uh, approved within our region. Uh, we've got Clark Creek just north of here, out, just outside of the Rocky region but Clark Creek will start, the panels will start coming in on ships in the next uh, month or so. And so exciting. I know, yeah. 195 massive panels will be driving through this city. So, I mean, how yeah. exciting that is. But, you know, that's, that's a real passion both the Mayor and I share uh, for our future as well. Local content, for anyone listening from a, from a local supply point of view, uh, it's something that Graham Shepherd from my office is very much focused on, whether that be on the large projects like ASMTI up there at Shoalwater Bay, or even just the smaller procurement items here. So it's local labour and it's local buy. So we're very much concentrating on that as well to continue that local content focus. So I suppose that gives you a flavour of some of those industry development areas that we're really working on, some new opportunities, but also trying to grow the pie on some of those 
long-held capabilities of Rockhampton region. Mm, yeah. mm, mm. Yeah. Some of the history and some of the future. Yeah, I really yeah, like that. Yeah. Hey, Caroline. Hey, Kelly. Thank you so much for joining us. So, Greg, tell us about, you've really seen Rocky with new eyes. Yeah. And tell us about what Rocky has shown you that was surprising. And then also about a little bit about the future based on these industries that you've just mm, mentioned and mm. how our business community can get involved. Yeah, no, fantastic. I mean, as a city alone and just going back, harping back on that livability factor, yeah. I mean, having been gone for 25 years, uh, I suppose I'm looking through, through a 50-year-old's eyes now, not a 20-year-old's eyes for starters, but I've just seen how the council has invested and, and other levels of government, of course, have invested in making it a more livable city, which then attracts talent. It, it, to yeah. me, it's about talent attraction. Uh, to me, that is so important to make sure that we've got people of a variety of talents, and that whether it be the unskilled labour through, right through to, to that management at executive level, having all the way through, the, having the engineers, having the labourers, having all those things so that when a new project or just a continuing industry develops, you can feed straight from the local area. So, you know, that, that to me is just how this is changing here. We've seen the unemployment rate go down in the December quarter to 7.1. Mm. So, you know, that is really heartening. People are moving here. It's part of this region's rising that, that we've touched on, uh, Elise. I mean, so, you know, so from, from a livability point of view, we've got a livable city. I, I've lived in several other, other cities. We've got things here that other cities don't have. Uh, very much so, but we've also got all the things that you could really want. Of course, we'll all fly to different places because th we think they've got something better, but you know, we have really got the wonderful things here. You know, the theatre, I was at the theatre the other day, and not that I'm a theatre buff, but I mean, what, what a lot of fun, and, and we've got the shows coming in there, now we're allowed to go back to the theatre. Yeah, it's You know, true. just from that point of view, from the events point of view, just delivering Rocky Nats and the economic injection to the community these sort of things add mm. to the city as well mm. you know it's very important to me that we have that variety as well so mm. you know i've seen that grow along the way and we i mentioned the the alliance airlines deal that was announced recently you know that's just about growing industry and growing that pie along the way when you've got investors like alliance airlines willing to invest others start to look so we've just got to continue with that investment attraction to make sure that people are looking at Rockhampton, putting Rockhampton on their radar. Yeah. Because, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a bit infectious at the end of the day. Uh, yeah. You know, he's, oh, bit, and also that, to use that term FOMO, it's a little bit of FOMO along the way because, you know, why are they investing there? Why, why aren't we there? And I've seen a little bit of that, especially after we hosted the Developing Northern Australia Conference oh, right. last year. Yeah, yeah. Saw a little bit of that. People were in town going, oh, I'm seeing a little bit here and a little bit there. Yeah. Why aren't we here? We should, we should talk to Advance Rockhampton and, and Council and, and start to see what's going on. So we've had a few of those potential investors just up here kicking the tyres, as I like to say. Nice. And, you know, and that, you know, so that side of things. So I think the region, the city has become more attractive to visitors to our own residents, but also to those investors along the line. So. Mm, perfect. Mm. Hey, Kerry, thank you so much for joining us. I'm here with Greg from Advanced Rockhampton. And we're going to talk now, we've been talking about Rocky more generally and um, Greg's background, but what I'd like to focus on now is this whole concept of regions rising. Mm. Tell us more about that. What does that mean, yeah. regions rising? Yeah, so last year uh, we signed up to what's called the Regional Australia Institute. Uh, they then set up with about 50, I think it was 45 to 50 local governments across Australia called the Regional Activators Alliance. Have to get that right, RA. <laughs> oh, RA for short, yeah, exactly. of course. It's a bit of yes. a RA, but, mm. but yeah, the Regional Activators Alliance. So what that really was, and that's small outback towns through to regional cities like us. So we're one of the larger ones, uh, oh, you know, right. at 85,000 people. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple there, a couple of cities like Ballarat, about 120,000. But then right down to, to towns, outback towns with a thousand people oh. were involved in that. So it is about the rise of the regions. Somehow uh, it's partly associated with the pandemic and people looking at their own lifestyles, being able to more accepted to work remotely, my wife included, of course, mm. in that one, being able to work remotely. So, but also the affordability factor, massive. So the, as part of RA, the Regional Activators Alliance, they went out, did a lot of research, got the professional research out there and found that one in five capital city residents were at least considering a move to the regions. And what three reasons were there? One was affordability. One was the fact that there are more jobs 
now mm. available in the regions. Mm -hmm. And the other one was lifestyle. Mm. So that's why you hear me talk a lot about that livability. It's not a term I like to use a lot, but I haven't found something to call it uh, that's, that's better or an alternative. So I'm probably just looking for some marketing slogan that somebody else does. But it's really, it is about that lifestyle and livability for a lot of people. They get out and they, they get the fresh air a little bit more and, and such. But even that affordability, wow, we saw it with houses in our own region here in Rocky, uh, how, how the prices have gone through the roof. Brisbane's the same and it's a capital city. So they're looking at, they're living in Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane. They look on the internet and go, wow, I can buy a house for half a million dollars. Mm. You know, and through COVID, they're buying them off the internet. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and to me, yes, okay, you go, why would you do that? But they're also not just looking at buying a house for half a million dollars or whatever it might be. They're looking at their whole life and going, I want a, a, quiet, a little bit quieter life it, it, with a bit of fresh air where I can afford, but also I want all the services. Yeah. And that, that's an important part. There's the livability, which includes all those services. And the great part about our region here is we have great healthcare services oh, and we have great education services. So for me, they're two great strengths. They're two strengths that you don't hear me mention a lot in health and education, other than the part where local government doesn't run it. But we, we stay in touch, but they're very well run in Rockhampton. That's the beauty of them. So, you know, people looking at, because that's why the outback towns and the, the smaller cities are struggling a little bit because they don't have that sheer mass to be able to have the education yeah. and health facilities that we have here in Rocky. Yeah. So it's what makes us more attractive from that yeah. point of view as yeah. well. So from yeah. that, so regions rising. So I say one in five looking for affordability, looking for jobs, and looking for for that fresh air and that lifestyle along the way. So what what the regional Australian Institute is really about is just highlighting that to one, two decision makers in Canberra and in state governments along the way. So that's why the, the conference, everyone thought it was a little bit weird that we were doing this conference in, uh, in Canberra yeah, uh, last a month. a regional <laughs> conference in Canberra. <laughs> that's right. That makes but it very it ironic. Really, it was really about getting the politicians along as part of that. And the right. Deputy Prime Minister was there. So it was getting that message and a couple of very smart regions, us not being one, uh, actually had billboards on the way to the airport. I noticed when oh, I was clever. going, so they yeah. really went over and above to, to yeah, get there. So, that's clever, you know, yeah. so from that point of view, so it was hold it there, but start to highlight. And then again, start with Canberra and start to move outwards. A little bit like I mentioned before with our strategy of moving outwards from a put Rocky on your radar, yeah. but it's starting to highlight. So there's a campaign called Move to More, yeah. okay? Whether you like that slogan or not, it's always in the eye of the beholder, of course. But move to more.com.au is really where you start to find out what other regions are doing as well. So it's a little bit of a collaboration tool, massively important for us. You and I have spoken about collaboration many times, and I'm sure listeners, you know, that's something that we use the term a lot. But, you know, you've got to live it. You can call it whatever you like. It's about communication. Mm. You've got to talk no matter where it is. So the Move to More campaign is about small and large regional towns and cities speaking to each other but it's also speaking to other levels of government to make sure that we're, again, we are getting our share of the pie. Because yeah. capital cities in Australia have grown very, very quickly and dragged out talent, especially, mm. out of regional towns and cities. And we need to get that talent back. Yeah. Uh, whether that be people coming back to Australia uh, because of the pandemic, or whether that just be people coming back like me from the cities that they moved to because they thought, I thought I needed to be there to get that that next great job. Mm. But those great jobs are here in the regions already. Mm. So it is time for the regions to rise up, to use that term, and really take their place in the market right now. Mm. And, and you know, you have some great businesses here in the Smart Hub alone, but just in my six months back, speaking to some of the, the businesses and the innovations they're using, I mean, uh, around Rockhampton, I, I'm really astounded by the quality of workmanship that, that comes out, whether that be a service industry mm. or whether that be a manufacturing or whatever it might be. And the, the people are using their own innovation along the way. So we need to be part of that journey with them, with the innovation, to br help them be educated in what others are doing around Australia and, and in those capital cities. What made the capital cities rise in the first place? You know, that, that's really what, you've got to look at that as well. You don't mm. want to copy that, but you've got to learn from it. You know, mm. what made them so popular? Mm. What made them, what made that talent want to go there? Yeah. You know, and I, look, I suppose I've got the luxury of going, that's why I went there. So, you know, that's what I'll use to get people to come to Rocky and, and, and work and live here uh, yeah. along the way. So that, that's why it's our turn to do this. I love um, it. So yeah. how can we as a business community um, contribute or be part of this rising regions? Oh, well, I think community business and community engagement uh, that's to say again, there's lots of terms, collaboration, communication. You came to one of my events with the mayor just recently. 
uh, we'll be running many events, you run many events, this one included, it's be part of your business community, okay? Understand what is happening outside of your space. Mm. I think that for me is the most important thing I can offer today, because it's something I do. I, I, I venture out to manufacturing facilities and, and go and learn about what they're doing with the lump of steel they just bought from, from down at the fabrication shop and what are they turning that into. So get comfortable outside of your own space, spend a portion of your time uh, dealing in a space that you, you don't work in. Mm. So understand, I want, you know, I, I don't have like the crude term, but get the butchers talking to the travel agents, you know, and, yeah, and those yeah, sort yeah. of things. Absolutely. You know, get cross yeah. cross fertilise industries yeah, along absolutely. the way, you know, and, and whether it's an event uh, in something like this, whether it's a face to face event uh, that, that anyone runs, you know, I've got a partnership going with the Chamber of Commerce, they run several events, yes, you run do. events, I mm. run events. Many others run events along the way across the region. I know, I know you were at a wonderful one last night. Is start talking. I don't like the term networking. It's one of those terms that's overused, but that's really what it is. Is you know talk, but don't be afraid to go outside of your own box yeah. and go. I want to talk about this. So you know, from my point of view, I can do a great website and all those sort of things, which we're working on at Advanced Rockhampton right now. But I mean, you know, read some of that. Take what you want. Or read our LinkedIn. Take what you want along the way. But I suppose I've got a real life story from just recently and uh, uh, a journalist from the Morning Bulletin said, I read the Advanced Rockhampton newsletter and you highlighted a manufacturing business. She said, well, I wanted to write a story about it as well. So I went out there. She said, I thought it was just going to be another, you know, few boilermakers and fitters out there building something. She goes, I spent two and a half hours out there because mm. what they're doing from an innovation point of view and the machinery they were using, it was something, one I hadn't seen before, but I was just fascinated by it. So, you know, when you actually take the time to go and look at these things, it's just so important for your own development along the way and how your business can develop. And that then in turn snowballs to the region. So, you know, to me, get along to the events, yeah. you know, and, and really be, get involved in your business community. At right. the end of the day, talk to each other. And, and I do feel, uh, Elise, that really uh, rocky businesses to some degree have stopped talking to each other. Uh, you know, I think, while we're booming, people get too busy, mm. and while we're quiet, <laughs> we're looking for the next bit of business. Yeah. We're, we're forgetting to communicate and work together to get that business, and, and I keep saying it, and grow that pie. Yeah. the only way Rockhampton will grow from a, whether it be population growth, but also from a business growth point of view, is really by growing that pie. It's not, it's not about we'll do our own business better, it's about growing that pie. It's bringing mm. new things in, but then working out how we supply. I used that example of renewable energy uh, projects before, and there's 11 of them in, within our region very close to coming to fruition, at least four or five that are close to fruition. But you know, a number of them that you can really look at and go, how do I become a service provider or a supplier to that industry, to that new opportunity? So if you don't come and listen to my staff and, and the guest speakers speak about renewable energy, then you might not know enough for starters you go, you're going in cold, and, that, and that's never fun, going in cold to, to pitch to somebody to go, oh, I sell widgets and, uh, you know, I really should supply to you. Well, what do you know about my business? Mm. If you know about it, you can come and sell to me a lot easier, that's mm. for sure. That's yeah. exactly right. Mm. Okay, so come along to all of the events, participate in the community, mm. talk to each other, collaborate, and just learn from all the different industries. So that's number one. And when you do that, the, the advantage for the actual individual business is that, number one, you can learn so many tactics and strategies of different from different yep. industries. Yep. But secondly, as you just said, it opens up a whole world of opportunity that you might not even have thought of mm. if you hadn't come along to, say, the renewable en yep. energies talk. Yep, exactly okay, right. so that's step one. How <laughs> else can we get involved? Yeah, oh, okay, fair enough. Well, I mean... That's it. Is I, I could sit here for hours. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure you can. <laughs> you know I love a good chat. I do. But, but you know, I mean, really, is we then have these surveys and we have the new economic development strategy. So I suppose I can talk a little bit at step by step how that might yeah, work yeah, as well. Yeah. I just don't want to bore anyone that's online either, by the way, <laughs> in speaking about that. I, I'm it, sure no one's yeah. bored. Jay, is anyone bored? <laughs> no. Everyone's still there. Yeah, no, that's good. So, so really, from that point of view, we, step one for us was to really go out into the precincts of the region and start to ask, what do you want? What, what, mm. What's your future look like along the way? We had about 500 people come back with that, which is a great response. We didn't expect that many. Yeah. So from my point of view, 500 responses, 
So we will now go in. We'll get. We'll sort of put all those together and yeah. uh, you know concentrate on what what's being asked for there. We'll then turn that into a bit of a community survey next. So it's a couple of surveys to start with, just to get that flavour of you know, so that we just don't go off on a tangent of our own and go, we know it all. We'll just go and do it. We, yeah. we know. We know what you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or we know what you should yeah, want. That's right. Yeah. I think we all get the part where where that could possibly go wrong. <laughs> that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So you know, see, so the first step one is really surveying the people out there, whether that be in business or just everyday residents along the way. We'll then have some precinct engagement sessions. So I know I've already spoken about events that we'll have, but these will be very specific, where people will get direct input into defining the next stage of economic strategy, and then an economic action plan will pop out at the end of that as well. But really, you know, we will be able to get a number of different industries, a number of different precincts, and a number of different levels of life and business along the way to really input into what a strategy looks like for the region. So I'm not really about boilerplate strategies and just having the, mm. the same one as every other council. So yeah, that, yeah. that for me, it's probably why I haven't rushed this exercise. So, yeah. you know, I'd really love to hear from anyone that wanted to be part of a precinct strategy or an economic strategy along the way. I, I'm always open to feedback along the way. So we, we do several of these precinct things. We go and speak to politicians, we speak to businesses, we speak to everyone along the way separately, but these group sessions are actually really those great workshop type sessions where you get a real say in what happens. And you know, to me, is we can all sit back and watch and take notice and, and do nothing about it, or we can get involved. So if someone wants to get involved, but they just they don't know where these sessions are being held mm. or when mm. they're being held, where can they go to find mm. the information or where can they register their interest? Yeah, well, really, get on the Advanced Rockhampton website um, yeah. or, or even Advanced So Rock just Google Advanced Rockhampton. Yeah, advancedrockhampton.com.au. But even, I think most people are on LinkedIn these days. Yes. And that's a tool I use very wisely and very widely. Yeah, yeah. So LinkedIn, <laughs> LinkedIn, LinkedIn yeah, is the platform. LinkedIn, talk to us there. My staff are always on the LinkedIn uh, from an administration point of view. Yeah. You know, but that's also where we use a major communication tool from a business and industry point of view. Yeah. And then from a tourism uh, and, and marketing point of view, we use very much websites and Facebook for that. So you know, you've got the internal facing and the external facing. But from a business perspective and being involved in the economic future, uh, but also understanding what we're doing along the way, things like the renewable energy and, and other initiatives, it's, it's get on there and talk to us. Inter right. Interact with us at the end of the day. It's easy to do the thumbs up, but interact with us. Yeah. Com comment on something we're doing. You know, yeah. I love to see comments. I'd much rather see that than the fact that we had 45 people give us a thumbs up sort of thing. Right. Don't get me wrong, give us a thumbs up, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thumbs up and comments yeah, and right. messages. <laughs> that's right. But, you know, I mean, for, for me, you know, that, that will continue to see that unemployment rate go down. And, yeah. and that's, that's yeah. a key factor for me. There's several others, of course. There's gross regional product and things like that. But that, seeing that, that unemployment number go down, uh, un unfortunately the state number is going up and some of that is pandemic related, of course. Uh, if we were sitting static, I probably wouldn't be so ecstatic. Mm. Uh, but the fact that one is going up and ours is going down, then mm. that's the important part for me. Oh, absolutely. Mm. And I think the other thing is, and I don't know if we have, you know, what the housing situation is, but just in um, population growth, mm. yeah, which yeah. is the real, is this a place where people want to live? That's yeah. the real tick. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's, that's exactly right. We're, our building approvals is another statistic I use quite, yeah. quite widely, is because it shows the growth on yeah. that side. It shows the growth in investment but it also shows the growth in demand. Yeah. Okay, so we've seen population growth from 81 to 88,000 uh, yeah. in, the, in the last 12 months. Yeah. We've seen un unemployment go from 7.9% to 7.1%, and those houses are filling because of those reasons. So, yeah, you know, there's not, it's like business in general. It's not, it's not just one thing that will, will uh, fix the problem yeah. here, or fix the issues yeah. along the way. So, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, the lovely Kelly has sent us a message. Thank you so much, Kelly. So she says, sign up to Advanced Rockhampton and explore Rocky net newsletters. And I'm guessing that you could do that through the website. Yeah, that would probably most definitely. be it's the a, best way yeah. to get to those. At least it's something we, uh, we've started over the last three or four months, yeah. just doing those newsletters. We try not to spam people. We all get a lot of emails these days. We yeah. really only do it once a month, right? Uh, that's a good you know, thing. and we try and keep them as brief as we can to to inform people along the way, but also at the same time, just 
keeping people involved along the way. That, yeah. That's for sure. So, yeah. yeah, thank you, Kelly, for that. Yeah. Much appreciated. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, the Explore covers that tourism and marketing and events side. Yeah. And then you've got the, the Advanced Rockhampton newsletter that covers that business and industry uh, yeah. side of things as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, so I really um, think that what you're doing in taking like a multi-dimensional approach to our economy mm. is fantastic. Mm. And to bringing different industries together, that's really good. And the other thing that's very promising is to see that while the rest of the state, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm generalizing, but it looks like the rest of the states mm. is slowing down slightly. Mm. Rocky is actually accelerating and going really, really well. And I can so relate to you know the livability of Rockhampton. I myself moved here from London um, a few years ago and moved here because of a couple of reasons. The first one is it, has, it does have such a beautiful lifestyle. You don't spend time in traffic. You don't spend your life in your car. Um, there's, the scenery is really beautiful. You're not far from the coast. And you're also very well connected globally through the internet. We have really great internet here. And you're also well connected to the rest of the world. We're an hour away by plane to Brisbane, where, and you can fly anywhere in the world from Brizzy. Yeah. And so we're so well connected, so you can have this fantastic lifestyle. And if you feel like you want to get out, you can yeah. really easily. Oh, exactly. That's why I always come back to those sort of livability, visibility, and, and investability. Oh, I suppose if you want to throw another one, just keeping with that, that theme, is the connectability. You've talked about that from a yeah living point of view and yeah. being able to jump on that plane and be an hour to Brisbane and then connect to anywhere in the world really from yeah. Brisbane when, when we're in post pandemic of course yeah yeah but you know but from a connected from a business point of view the, the attractiveness of our region is the air sea road and rail links yes. we have all four and not every city has that yeah, you know not every right. town has that yeah. you know especially even more so now with Bruce Highway upgrades, Capricorn Highway upgrades. You know, there's real reasons for those. Uh, you know, from an agriculture point of view, there's some very small roads being built in Western Queensland that really feed into uh, what we do in Rockhampton. So there's a three kilometre stretch out near Tambo, uh, if you know where that is, right? But that three kilometre stretch will mean that that beef comes here yeah. rather than goes somewhere further north. Yeah. It's because that link just stops them from going. So they just go the other direction, yeah. you know? So, but then from a port point of view with the Port of Gladstone and the Port Alma there, yeah. you know, that things like these 195 solar panels, mm. that you probably wouldn't have built that that solar farm there without the port there. Yes, so that's you, right. You know, the value of those, and people don't realise the value of those. We all know they're there, and then from that rail point of view, uh, you know, we have this amazing manufacturing facility down there with the rail yards uh, that has opportunity for us. It mm. is still, it's still an opportunity. It's a bit of a dormant asset at the moment but it's a great opportunity. But even by having it there, it means that we have those great rail links. Yeah. And we are a great old rail town, there's no yeah. doubt about that. Yeah. And yeah, as I said, I've, I've mentioned road with the highway upgrades. They have a real purpose other than just uh, you and I driving back and forward to wherever it might be. True. Uh, you know, that is really about movement of people, movement of freight, yeah. uh, and just movement in general and connection. Yeah, mm. it's really, mm. really awesome. Mm. So if you had one message, and I know you've already delivered so many great messages, <laughs> but if you had one more message to deliver to our business community, mm. what would that be? I can't put it down to one, Elise. I can't believe you'd ask me such a question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, okay, let me, let me ask you differently. Is there anything else that you want yeah. our business community sure. either to know or to do? Yeah, sure. I think uh, along the way, there's probably three messages I want to say. Engagement. Yeah. I've mentioned, and I've probably mentioned this. I'm probably summarising more than anything. Nice. But, but engagement nice. with each other. Yes. Engagement with the city and the region yes. along the way. So engagement between businesses, engagement amongst government. Be involved in what's happening. But engagement in events and the lifestyle yeah. as well. Yeah. But, but please talk up your own region. Be proud. Mm -hmm. If you're not proud, tell us why you're not proud. Yeah. Let, let us make you proud. So it's about city pride. So that's sort of number one from that city pride, engagement, all those side of things. Okay, so visiting friends and relatives, where's the 10 places you'll take them? You know, yeah. work that out. Write down you know, 10 places you'll take visiting friends and relatives along yeah. the way. Be proud of those 10 things. Yeah. Or make it five if you can only find five. But spend I that. I think there are 10. Yeah. There, yeah. No, there, there definitely would be are. 10. Uh, yeah. I, I got my pen and paper out when I started and, and really found a lot more than, than I thought I was going to find as yeah. well. So that, that engagement, that then helps us put Rocky on the radar. Yeah. So that is all, all about really putting Rocky on the radar. That is about growing Rockhampton for good reasons. 
sustainable growth. I've said that to you in the past. It's not growing for growth's sake. Okay, we don't want to just grow just just to have, say we're a bigger city. Mm -mm. It's growing sustainably so that we can have better business, better lifestyle, and just get people out of those capital cities because we have a very big country and a lot of value to offer from that point of view. And then really, local. Look after local first. If you can't get something locally, one, we need to work out why and how, but you know, think there first. Think locally first. I say that to my staff all the time, is can we get that locally? Because I know I'm myself, I sometimes go, I can't believe I'm buying that from Brisbane or Sydney or wherever it is. You know, so I try and look locally wherever I can. I want to just latch onto that last point. I find it so interesting. My co-presenter last night um, made the same point about buying locally, and he is a local um, consultant. And uh, it's so interesting. People in Rocky won't use his services. They'll use someone in Brisbane. And then people in Brisbane then contact the consultant who lives in Rocky <laughs> and flies him down. People in Melbourne and Sydney do the same. Yeah. And I certainly have had some of the, those similar experiences where... Um, some of the people in the capital cities are using local people to help them, mm. um, local businesses. And so we really should be buying local because the capital cities are buying our local. We should be buying our local too. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. That's not yeah. it? It's always in, in, in the forefront of my mind. Yeah. There's so many other focus areas that I have, but I always put local content in. Even though it's not an industry per se, yeah. I always lump it in there with agriculture and defence and resources and I go local content. Yes. I just pop it in there to make sure we're thinking about that because it feeds into all of those focus areas that we look at. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so last question. The time is just flying. Last couple of questions. The first one is, um, what events do we have coming up that are exciting? Oh, well, thank you for that. I, I appreciate that question because <laughs> that is one that I really love to talk about. Yeah. But I mean, Rocky Nat's just done. If you weren't part of it, please get involved next year. It's just, you don't have to be a revenue to be part of Rocky Nats. It, it was just a wonderful event, that's for sure. So from that point of view, we roll into, just the locally, we roll into Anzac Day. You know, that, mm. uh, you know it's an mm. important event for us. But then we roll into Beef Week, a city-defining event for Rockhampton, like Rocky Nats. They're city-defining. Be part of them because they are what you'll, you'll get something out of, that's for yeah. sure. So Beef Week is in early May. We then go to the Seven Rocky River Run uh, towards the end of May. We then, we then go into uh, the pop-up polo, and then we go into the Rocky Show, and then later in the year, we've got this amazing building next door here, the, the Rockhampton Mu Museum of Art, that will open as well. And then part of that will be River Festival as well. So, you know, wow. it's, a, you know it, it's just a cracker of a year from an events point of view. So really need COVID to get behind us. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so we can uh, we stop wearing those masks. We need that vaccination thing yeah, going. That's yes. right. And I was only speaking with the Beef uh, Australia people this morning, and they're still working furiously through their COVID plans at the moment to make sure they can get maximum numbers of people through through mm. Beef Week as well mm. along the way. So, you know, just from an events point of view, keep an eye out on both Advanced Rockhampton and Explore Rockhampton websites to make sure that you know what's on. Don't worry, you'll hear from me. Uh, I'll be all over the place speaking about these events, that's for sure. So. Okay, I just want to clarify that. So really there are two brands under mm. Advanced Rockhampton. The mm. first one is the Advanced Rockhampton brand, and yes. that's more for business and industry. Yes. And then Explore Rockhampton is mm. more for tourism and events. Yes, that's, that's right, Elise. You, yeah. You're 100% correct. And uh, it's very important for me to separate those two. As I said yes. right at the outset, it's all about economic development. They all make up economic development, but it's important that both of those brands are there, Explore Rockhampton and Advanced Rockhampton. Yeah. yeah, so whenever you see anything on social media, whether it says Advanced Rockhampton or Explore Rockhampton, it all kind of boils back to your department, which yeah, is the correct. Advanced Rockhampton correct. department, yeah. in, as part of Rockhampton Regional Council. That's council right. Council funded and council owned. Brilliant. Oh, Mr. Greg Bowden, you're doing a really good job. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for joining me today for this Hub Live. Um, I do always ask the last question, but now I'm so hesitant because I don't know. Is, is there anything else that you'd like to share? It's oh, usually my last question. I, I, I'll just add a tidbit, and it won't be of any any uh, any great substance. Is something I didn't mention is is a niche area is called fishing the Fitzroy. Oh okay? yes, Whether we you're have a fisherman to talk about or not, fishing. It's yes. just unbelievable, and yeah. that's great for the fishermen, but as an industry, a tourism industry for us. So this isn't about putting fish on the plate necessarily, maybe your own plate, but this isn't about an industry supplying fish to the seafood market. This is a tourism factor for the region. Yeah. And I was astounded when I got, got back here six months ago, 
how big it had become. Yeah. And we've got another t fishing TV show coming up in the next month or so to do another one of their one hour Saturday afternoon type shows based in here. And, and I think we're now getting, with the last count, we've probably dominated the fishing shows uh, uh, you know, over the last 12 months. So I guess the Barramundi and the Golden Threadfin in the Fitzroy River are well known. Okay, and that is amazing. And I have to say that um, I remember a conversation probably about three or four years ago about fishing in Rocky. And at that time, I thought, I don't can't see how this will work, but it's worked <laughs> brilliantly. Yeah. And so just to make it plain and clear, apparently, and you please correct me if I'm wrong, the Barramundi in our river, which is just like 50 meters that way, is over a meter. Yes. Is that right? And that's yeah. what makes it so, so special. The golden thread fin are the ones you'll see the big pictures of, right. where they get meter and a half. And wow. Barramundi, yeah, they, they're probably getting close to it, to that meter. But yeah. uh, you know, not that any of my staff said, tell me about that yet. But uh, <laughs> but you know, I mean, from that point of view, I say I look at it as that tourism industry and yeah. what it injects into the into the community. I only had a text. Uh, last week from a fellow who said, I'm bringing my dad up to, for fishing because you told me about it. He yeah. said, what hotel, what restaurant, what pub, you know, you know where mm -hmm. do I go? So you look at that and go, so it's not just about the fishing. Yeah. It's about, he took three bed nights with his dad to two rooms. They ate at local restaurants and they drank at local pubs. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and it brings people to Rocky and once you've experienced Rocky and the beauty of Rocky and the ease of Rocky, the mm -hmm. livability, yeah. to use that word, yeah. Yeah, then people will come back. That's right. I'm exactly. Sure. It's about getting them back here, it, it, getting them here in the first instance, yeah. and then getting them to come back or even live here later. So, yeah, yeah, I think once you, once Rocky grabs your attention, then it does really become mm. thing something that's on your radar, and mm. it has a pull. It has yeah. a specific kind of pull. Yeah. It's it's a lovely, lovely space to live. It sure is. Okay, Mr. Greg Bowden, thank you so much for thank joining you, me for today on Hub Live. Um, it's been so interesting speaking with you, and thank you for sharing everything that's happening. In Rocky. And again, if you want to get in touch with Greg, LinkedIn is the place to go, or you can also just Google Advanced Rockhampton and definitely make sure to sign up for the newsletters through the website. And I think you just mentioned that you'll be launching a new website, but I'm sure the website that is up will have all of the information that you need to, to connect. And then lastly, please make sure that you link into all of the events that are hosted by Advanced Rockhampton. I've attended a couple and they're really, really great events. And they'll give you a big, broad overview of everything that's happening. And it's also a really great place to connect with other like-minded people and business owners. As usual, thank you so much for sharing, uh, for, for sharing us, for joining us today for today's Hub Live. And we will be back in another couple of weeks and we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.